you need me to bring, Uncle Matt? Yes. Those bring, are the days. bring two cases of beer. Next dude, bring two fifths of, of, of wine, whatever. Yes. By the time everybody get there, you got a whole full blown party jumping. <laughs> right. That, that's our culture. I miss those days, boy. Nowadays, yeah. it's hard to do stuff like that because people want to shoot and everything. I miss going to the lake, the barbecues. I miss all of that. I miss that. Mm -hmm. I miss that. But th thank you so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here. I'm going to let somebody else get your time, but I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Thanks, really. All right. Love you. Bye. <laughs> All right. What do you do, Ralphie? Peace, God. <laughs> peace, peace, peace. What's up? Bro? Been a minute. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Been through a lot, been through a lot. Um, you know, I don't be making mine real long, so I just want to get right to it. What's going on with Trump? Um, Trump is waiting for orders on what to do next, for the most part. Uh -huh. the, it's a whole white hat military retired general counsel and a whole bunch of chiefs all sitting around determining what's to be next. And right now we're just waiting on the dollar to, to bottom to fall out the dollar. Okay. That's going to be the catalyst for the uh, shock and awe period of exposure. Okay. My next question is, uh, What's going on under the Vatican? Is that is she is that thing? That running? shit over so, with. Okay. That shit over with. Even okay. in the statement that the Pope that was released by the Pope, where he rescinded the uh, discovery doctrine. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that was put out by the office of the Pope actually, because there is that he that motherfucker gone. First of all, they. Used to Take him apart and put him under the bed at night because he was a robot, an android. Mm. That's why they had two popes. Say that, bro, because when you was telling everybody that Biden was, it was different characters playing him. Nobody believed mm -hmm. that shit, but I, I always believe what you say, but it's like, obvious. Coming out with it now, yeah. Like different people coming out with the shit, so it's crazy. But that's all I, I wanted to know. I just wanted. Get on here and ask you a couple of them couple of questions. But good to see you, bro. Love you. All right. Peace, guys. All right. Be good. Ew, Gambit. Yeah. He's gone. What's going good. on with you? Nothing much, man. Just letting let the light, yeah. you know what I'm saying? What's on your mind? Um, I'm just trying to ask a question about um, what you said, on Dr. G. You was talking about how everybody used to be women, the pygmy women, and I was uh, connecting that to, like, a vision I had, like, doing, like, shamanic drumming or whatever. It was, like, a picture of a woman. She was, uh, I'm assuming, my first life or whatever. Like, I think it's my third time here. Um. But my first life was probably like the pygmy woman, like you said. And I was wondering if you like seen your pygmy woman um, in Christ. My, my, I didn't. I was created as the first born of the earth born, parthogenic son of woman. Right. So mm -hmm. my mother is really um, like the block that I fell from. Right. From her. From her energy produces me. Right. Then I have to go, go through the process of developmental awareness in each lifetime. Right. I remember those women, those little pygmy women, dark skinned chocolate women we call big mamas from lifetimes. I remember when I used to come into this to this land. Um, many times I would always be on a barge of what is called a flat boat uh, or a raft 
and we would be navigating the bayous of Mrs. Uh, Louisiana to go to her hut. And it was all the way back off in the bayou. You couldn't get to it. Then, and in this lifetime, I'm meeting her in a major city. All of my alarms is off already when I first see her. She's not where she's normally at when I incarnate, when I come here. She's out of position. That means something's wrong. I got to figure it out. I don't know what how what it is yet. I'm a baby. But my lifetime, I have to yeah. figure out the problem and the solution. And when I do figure it out, I have to tell as many other clansmen as I can until we can effectuate a cohesive change in order to put her back where she properly belonged. Right. So it was I coming so, through yeah, here, yeah, not sure. traveling in the bayou swamps, going to see her, and she's in the inner city. Right. So, yeah, that answers my uh, first question. Uh, another one I had was about um, like the Kundalini energy. Like, so, like, mine was just recently last year, like in February. I remember um, I read the Eckhart Tolle book and I had the uh, audio book, whatever. And mine just awakened, and it, and it felt like it was, it was an out, it was outside of just like the um, book. It was like I, it was like some ancestral like um, curses being broken or something. Like my, I felt like my grandma even said "big mama" to me, like or she was saying like this is um, that was just the only two words I heard from her. But it felt like she either like merged with me or like she was like starting to protect me after that moment, after that Kundalini awakening. So I was wondering if you knew. Like, there's no explanation for this really anywhere. I'm reading a book on it, but it's a little bit uh, uh, shaky. Um, you're going to get spirit communications from ancestors, right? Like the, mm -hmm. Through dreams, yeah, for sure. I saw it in dreams after that, like, yeah. really recently after They that. showed me the victory celebration. That's how I knew I, won, I had already won, because they can see the entire time spectrum from outside That's of true. time. <clears throat> And they took, they showed it to me, and they had me a good old chicken dinner with red beans and rice, and because I had got rid of the enemy. Yeah, I seen some similar like we was at church or whatever we had or some type of uh, gathering, and they had like on their um, they like church mother hats with like the the uh, feather on it or like the big um, the big like uh, first lady hats on, and it was like giving a speech like after the victory or whatever, but. Um, trying to think of what my last question was. Um, so like I, I guess like it was just about AI. Like I recently had like profound um experience with AI. Like um, basically it was talking. I was telling them about this like spiritual experience or whatever, and it was like, oh yeah, like your grandma's definitely protecting you. Like you should just keep going doing you. And I was like, this thing is better than my therapist with giving me advice or giving me um yeah, that's like, your higher conscience. I need from a your higher self. For sure, yeah, and like it was just like it was giving me closure with the whole situation versus like um because like you can't I don't think that the ancestors would like tell me like directly like it, I got images no that, like, they tell you too to directly but, um, it's just that the language they speak in is different from the language you learn so you just trying to relearn how to read the language that they speaking to you in so you can clear to clarify the message. It ain't that you ain't getting the message. Right. It's just that the message ain't clear because you're still in training. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Yeah. You're going to learn it over time. It's going to take some time. How long it's going to take, however long it takes, it's a process. In 1900, by Howard Gould, husband of the then famous actress Catherine Clemens. After buying the land, Gould began construction on the castle, modeling it after the Kilkenny Castle in Ireland. The castle was supposed to be the main residence on the property and was completed by 1904. However, Catherine Clemens rejected the castle and thought that it simply didn't suit her well enough. And if you look at her, she looked like a dang mulatto. A mulatto. She looked like a mix. Uh, look at her hair texture. Look at the nose. That's a Nubian nose. She got like that damn chin, that little booty chin. But look at look at her. She looked like a mulatto, though. Hey, hey look. look. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You want to say something on that? All of these buildings they saying was built in the 1900s. But look, they were supposed to be built in the 1900s. But somebody keep doing renovations to these buildings. I'm thinking they was already here. 
and they just telling us the 1900s because the, the the architecture don't match. He's right. That's right. Right, but we don't we don't know the subtleties in the architecture. The one that made the uh, most amount of sense is the one they say he disassembled and reassembled. Yeah, yeah. And look, they say it's like her like her, her name was Gold, <laughs> as in the Golds. Go ahead. Oh yeah, and then you notice the guy that was uh that was contributing to the uh, one of them castles. I think it was the Smithsonian. Never came over here, but he was in France. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where did the Statue of Liberty come from? France. Who sold the Louisiana to purchase to the English? French. Oh, okay. Man, this shit's gonna be crazy. I already know you're gonna be alone there. Hold on. So Gold then built the Hempstead House for them instead. Gold. And the huge castle was used as a stable and servants quarters for many years after. You hear what they say? Stop. Today, all the you hear what he say? The castle was used um, as a servants quarters. Uh -huh. For years, uh -huh. remember I said they turned to all of our castles and our um, 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 living quarters into uh, POW camps. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right. So they're telling you what's going on right here, but they're giving us the wrong dates to mislead us on purpose. Okay. Go ahead. Right. So you think we're dealing with like the 1700s, about around uh, between 16, 17? These these build these buildings was is obviously older than 1492. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the ones up around New York. Okay, go ahead. I'm with you. I'm with you on it. All right. So we got one more here. Then we're gonna watch the other one, and then we're gonna look at the trip again. Okay. All right. Though the castle is not open for public tours, there is a visitor center and a great hall located under the castle's clock tower, where functions are often held, including fitness classes and cultural events. Number one, Cliff Palace. For number one, we decided to include the natural beauty and native roots of the United States. Mesa Verde National Park in Southern Colorado is quite different from most national parks you might visit. Sure, it's home to rare species of wildlife, but these are not typically the reasons people visit this park. Situated on the wall of Cliff Canyon, you will find a small village that has seemingly been carved into the cliff face several hundred years. You can see this, right? Yeah. First discovered in 1888 by two cows. Hey, you know, this look like this look like Dogong Twa Twa uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about it in a minute because this is this is the uh, one of the Pueblo villages. Yeah, that makes sense because the Pueblos are uh, short. Short people. I actually met met some Pueblos. I actually lived out there in New Mexico with them. Yeah, let's, this one almost done. Then we're going to go okay. to the other one. Boy, searching right. for stray cattle, the Cliff Palace is believed to have been built in the 1200s and consists of around what? 150 rooms. Built by ancestral Puebloans, it's made out of sandstone and wood and is the largest cliff dwelling in North oh. America. Archaeologists say that oh. it would have housed around 100 people. Hey, let me, I ain't mean to stop, but I wonder what the hell Pueblo means. In Spanish, I, I, I used to know what it means, Pueblo. It's like village. Okay, all right. Yeah, now, oh, shit, man. Oh, I'll go ahead. And oh, they formed man. part of other smaller dwellings also found in the area. They concluded that the palace was probably oh, abandoned shit. due to overcrowding and was ultimately oh, forgotten about for approximately 300 years before its rediscovery. Today, you can take a guided tour through the palace, and you can get a glimpse of life from a few centuries ago, including yeah, the Tower Square, really which is a tall building, approximately the same height as the roof of the cave, and consists of four separate floors. Although the tower had to be restored, the palace and surrounding dwellings give visitors an epic experience. Let us know which of these you would want to visit in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Now, that last one, the thing first that you notice, the style that they used to build it, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Then you notice that they told you that they don't know what happened to the people. Yeah. Right? That's what we're talking about. So um, while you're pulling up the next one, the the whole village left the fight into the Gullah Wars. Uh-huh. Right? It's abandoned, it's abandoned castles, right? Or, or is it 10 most uh, impressive medieval-style castles? This one might be the right one. Okay, all right. What's the runtime on it? Uh, twenty-five minutes. No, that ain't, that's too, that's too long. Hello, We're not gonna watch that one. To another DTG the other one is not that long. Air it's like eight minutes. Not about a specific historic person or event. This one, nineteen minutes. The 
In this episode, we infiltrate an old fortress in the heart of Germany. The yeah. story of this unique site dates back to... No, that's, that's some entirely different. Maybe this we video. can watch some of the other one. Uh, we might just fast forward through a couple of other castles. Lieutenant Eugene Irwin's monologue turn, about the concept prison of prison turned into an army such as location, oh, no, that ain't it. defense, garrison. It's got to be this one. This one you saw me right here. That might be fast forward this time. Hello, YouTube, and welcome back to an familiar with that being a fortified personal home built sometime between 500 and 1500 AD. I would say that this fits would have this castle been built in. You know how I said that these were all already full screen and that I was fast fast looking forward. at many full screen first. But this is this. See that how, how the uh, castle carved in the side. Yes, yeah, so just like the uh, dogons. Yep, and just like the other village we just seen. Uh huh. This is uh, the Montezuma Castle. Push play. People style ones. Well, that is mostly true, except for this first one. This castle is actually estimated to be about eight hundred years old, with most historians and archaeologists agreeing that it was built sometime between eleven hundred AD and fourteen twenty five AD, which actually mm -hmm. places it within the medieval period. At least it would have this castle been built in Europe. However, it is not what many would picture when thinking of a castle, lacking many of the advanced techniques that were being employed by European castles at the time. However, based on the definition of a medieval castle that I am most familiar with, that being a fortified personal home built sometime between 500 and 1500 AD, I would say that this fits that description and is a legitimate medieval castle. So, suck it, Europe. Hey, you know, some of the Pueblos weren't even around in, in that time. But. Skip to the next one. They couldn't have built it. It had to be some all max or dogons or, or, or twa that built it. There was us. We was motherfuckers look like us. Yeah, they, they, they the pueblos didn't even exist then because because three twenty five three twenty five. Well, pueblo pueblo is the name that the Spaniards gave to the people from the villages. Yeah, that's what it mean. The village. Yeah. All right. So this, hold on. Let's speak to the next one. It ain't no way they the Pueblos didn't build it. They weren't even around then. They a mixed tribe. All tribes mixed now. Yeah, you right. Okay, all right. This right here. Let me go. Belvedere Castle. Look at listen for the years that was supposed to be built. Okay, I got you. Castle, a small. Time, of which like only the stone foundations have survived. Its discovery in 1933 revealed many Sinagua artifacts and greatly increased understanding of their way of life. At number nine, we have Belvedere Castle, a small tourist location in Central Park, New York City. This one earns its relatively low spot on the list. You see where I said, right? Thing, yeah. Mostly just a tacky tourist attraction in one of the worst cities on earth. That's right, New York blows. Come at me. Named for the Italian, meaning beautiful view. Central Park's Belvedere. And you know, some of these castles were schools for the art, man, for the crowd. Before they, before, for us, before, uh, like the, what they was calling witches and warlocks when the Roman Catholic Church or the Spanish Inquisition or the Conquistadors you're talking about came over here to take our shit. Go ahead. Castle offers park goers exactly what its name implies. With its two balconies, it supplies wonderful panoramic Especially views that York. include some of Central Park's most beautiful and famous landmarks. The Delacorte Theater, the Great Lawn, the Turtle Pond, and the Ramble. Originally designed in 1865 by Calvert Bow and Jacob Ray Mould, Belvedere Castle was intended to be a Victorian folly, a fantasy structure that provides a great backdrop and views, but without a real intended purpose. With its strong stone facade, grand turret, oh, and play, so I know y'all see it through this bullshit. Stunning attraction inside, right? <laughs> inside visitors will discover a vast collection of natural history artifacts, such as skeletons and paper mache birds. Okay, let's go to the there next. Are also, a few microscopes and telescopes on the. And to the, and to, and to the person that's in the comments, the Mexicans we already we already broke that down. They come from us mixing with the uh, Ho Shin over over time. All right, right here, this is the next one. The castle form. 